Uh, hello students, uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, on the power estimation. So although it is it is a module is on power um, and I have written it as an estimation uh, uh, subsection for this particular module, uh, it is basically trying to estimate the power using uh, using a driving factor uh, expression. And uh, what we'll do is in the initial part of this lecture, we'll quickly go uh, go to the definition of the driving factor or try to understand the driving factor first and then try to realize that or use the driving factor uh, in our circuit design to estimate the overall power. Right. So let's go to the let's move to the next slide. Uh, so let me also pick up a pointer. Uh, and uh, this is an empty slide uh, which says uh, the output current. So what I want to do is uh, just want to summarize uh, what you know, how do we define the driving factor? So let me go back uh, and then I'll draw the two input NAND gate. Uh, so I have a two input NAND gate. So I have a PMOS transistor in parallel, uh, two of the PMOS transistors in parallel, and we will have the VDD rail, and then we have the two of the NMOS transistors in series. All right. Uh, so here is my input A, B, and here is my input A, B, All right? And uh, let me also draw the uh, inverter here. Uh, so a two is to one benchmark inverter. Um, so we'll have a PMOS transistor and then connected to an NMOS one. And then I'll write the sizes here as two is to one. Uh, and then so that I will have also have a C load capacitance here. And then I will also have a C load capacitance here. Right, so in this particular case, if I have uh, whatever, the C load capacitance could be different, so I'll have it as a C load dash here. So the capacitance are different. Uh, but what, uh, and the, the way the, we size this particular uh, transistors is like, you know, if it is two is to one, uh, we wanted uh, the size to be nothing but two and two here, and then two and two here. So that my, uh, you know, uh, while it is falling down, the falling resistance should be equal to that of the falling resistance of the two is to one inverter. What it really implies is the current that is, you know, while it is, uh, while the output node is doing the switching from uh, one to zero, the output current here uh, should be same as that of the output current of the two is to one inverter while it is falling down. And similarly, we have sized it to two and two here so that in the worst case condition, if one of the transistor is on, the you know the the rising current here of the output should be similar to that of the rising current of the two is to one inverter right so what 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 we you know what we have done previously is to size this up accordingly two and two and then two and two here so that we'll get the output current of uh, you know the the capacitor being charged or discharged that is output current equal to that of the output current of that of the uh, two is to one inverter, right? So with this particular understanding of the sizing of the gates, especially for the two, uh, for the two input NAND gate and then two input NOR gate, let's try to redefine the driving factor, another parameter or another factor, which we can define uh, the gate sizes, right? Through which we can actually define the gate sizes. So here is the definition, the driving factor, the driving factor here is defined as nothing but the ratio of the input capacitance of the gate uh, divided by the logical effort and then the whole divided by the input capacitance of the benchmark inverter 2 is to 1 inverter, right? So it is nothing but, uh, you know, the input capacitance of the gate uh, and it's the, basically the ratio of the input capacitance of the gate, whatever we have, and then the input capacitance of the 2 is to 1 inverter and also uh, in the denominator we have the logical effort of this particular gate. Right. Remember that in our previous slide, we had, uh, you know, the two input NAND gate to be of size two is to two. The NMOS uh, transistor was of the size two. The PMOS transistor was of the size two. So that we will get uh, the, the outward current similar, you know, the current I as similar as that of the two is to one inverters. Right now, this is what the definition I have here. So let's say if I have the, uh, the two input NAND gate. So I'm drawing the two input NAND gate, two of the transistors, PMOS transistors in parallel and uh, two of the transistors in series and uh, let's say that the size is uh, two and two and then two and two so that means that this particular gate is of is having an input capacitance of four so that's what uh, we know the gate with the size of four indicates that in uh, the individual input to this particular uh, gate sees a capacitance of four c 
right so in this particular case the input capacitance here which is connected to this and then the input capacitance here which is connected to this sees a capacitance of 4c right so this is what uh, what this is what we have already learned and this is by definition we write it as uh, the size the gate size as 4 indicates that the input capacitance to this particular uh, gate you know whatever the number of uh, the inputs that we give each in, in input uh, sees a gate capacitance of 4c so as per the driving factor definition if i have this particular two input nand gate of size 4 i know that the gate capacitance will be 4c so it will be 4c divided by the logical effort uh, g of this particular two input nand gate is 4 by 3 divided by the 3c input capacitance of the 2 is to 1 inverter it turns out that uh, so this 3 and this 3 will get cancelled and then 4 and 4 will get cancelled so finally what we have is uh, nothing but the value as 1 similarly if i have a 2 input nor gate if the if the gate size is 5 that means that each of the inputs sees a capacitance of 5c so 5c uh, divided by the logical effort of a 2 input nor gate is 5 by 3 and then the whole divided by the 3c capacitance uh, the input capacitance of the 2 is to 1 inverter will give me the x value as 1. What it really implies is the x value of 1 implies that the current drive so you know in the previous slide we had seen the output current right and the output current of the 2 input NAND gate should be equal to that of the output current of the inverter the current drive in this case is very very similar or actually same as that of the 2 is to 1 inverter right so that's why we'll get the value x as 1 so in fact uh, you know if if i try to find out what we are trying to see is the x value right which is nothing but the output current of this particular gate divided by the or uh, the uh, the current the output current of the 2 is to 1 inverter and this particular definition uh, of the driving factor is actually rendering this the gate output current whatever gate we have to input NAND gate or a four input NAND gate or a you know whatever combinatorial circuit gates its output current divided by the benchmark inverter two is to one inverters uh, output current that is what defines the driving factor but you know to just to you know because of all this uh, characteristics parameter like uh, the the logical efforts and you know we have, we know uh, you know we are known to uh, design our gates or characterize our gates with this uh, you know the the input gate uh, the gate sizes as nothing but the input capacitances so we consider this input capacitances we consider the logical efforts and then define our driving factor but driving factor Im actually implies it is nothing but how much time the gate current is actually more then that of the benchmark inverters 2 is to 1 uh, inverters uh, output current right so if i have a size of 4 here what it implies is actually the output current uh, uh, size of 4 here the x driving factor turns out to be 1 for a 2 input NAND gate which implies that the output current of this particular 2 input NAND gate is very very similar to that of the 2 is to 1 inverter similarly if i have a size of 5 the driving factor turns out to be 1 which means that the output current of the 2 input NOR gate is similar to that of the um, the 2 is to 1 inverter right hope this particular definition is clear to everyone moving ahead so if i know the parasitic or rather if i know the driving factor here if i know the driving factor here can i now establish what is the overall input capacitance and then the parasitic capacitance so if i know the driving factor and if i don't uh, you know uh, if i uh, know the, uh, the driving factor and if i multiply that with the normalized parasitic factor and if i multiply with that of the logical effort and then multiply with the 3c 3c then i should be able to establish the parasitic capacitance and then the input ca capacitance subsequently right now to understand this let's take an example and then try to understand so let's take a two input nand gate which we had seen uh, from the start of this particular lecture uh, the size of 2 and 2 the size of 2 and 2 in the nmos and in the pmos side the output uh, parasitic capacitance of 6c here because this 2 this 2 and this 2 will contribute to have a capacitance of 6c the driving factor of this 2 input NAND gate is nothing but 1 here. The parasitic factor for a 2 input NAND gate is nothing but 2 here. Right? I have, uh, you know, the normalized parasitic of a 2 input NAND gate is nothing but 6C divided by 3C. So it will be nothing but 2. The logical effort of the 2 input NAND gate is 4 by 3. Right? So with this particular X values and then G values and then the P values, can I now try to validate what is the parasitic overall parasitic capacitance and then the input capacitance? 
The overall parasitic capacitance is nothing but 3C multiplied by 1 multiplied by 2. So it will be 6C, which turns out to be the 6C here. Right. So it does validate the parasitic capacitance. Input capacitance, uh, nothing but 3C multiplied by the value of X, which is nothing but 1 here, multiplied by the logical effort, which is 4 by 3. So I will get the input capacitance as 4C, which is what is validated here. If I consider, you know, two, these two inputs coming from the NMOS and PMOS, I'll actually have the 4C capacitance. So again, I have just uh, reiterated here, X is equal to 1 implies that the output current of uh, the two input NAND gate here is same as that of the 2 is to 1 inverters output current. Right, moving ahead, uh, let's take another example of a two input NOR gate. Uh, the parasitic is 2, the logical effort is 5 by 3. And let's say that the, the, uh, the X value is 1 here. And the reason X value is 1 here, because I know that the 4 is to 1 size of the for a two input NOR gate, or rather the gate size of 5 will actually give me the output current, uh, same as that of the output current of the 2 is to 1 inverter. So I will have uh, the X value as nothing but 1. So if I consider this x value, g value and p value for a 2 input NOR gate, I should be able to find out or validate the parasitic capacitance, which is nothing but 3c into x into uh, parasitics, uh, normalized parasitic of a 2 input NOR gate, which is nothing but uh, 2. So 6c is the parasitic uh, factor and the input capacitance turns out to be 5c, 3c into uh, 5 by 3 into, or rather this is 5 by 3 and this is 1. So I'll get a 5c capacitance at the input side. And to validate that, uh, I have the size of 4, 1 and 1. So overall, it will give me the parasitic of 6C. And if I connect these two inputs, I will actually get the input capacitance as 5C. So that is also validated. So 6C and then 5C capacitance is validated. So going forward, what we can actually use is, uh, we can use this particular definition of 3C multiplied by the driving factor if the gates are defined with the help of the driving factors multiplied by the parasitics right of that particular gate should give me the parasitics of that particular gate and similarly 3c multiplied by the, uh, the driving factor multiplied by the logical effort of that particular gate should be able to give me the input capacitance of that particular gate right now this capacitances are you know this this becomes our absolute capacitance now this absolute value of the capacitance is very useful while we are estimating the energy or while we are estimating the power the switching power or the dynamic power and similarly the switching energy uh, or the energy delivered by the VDD or the dynamic energy that is being delivered by the VDD. So in that sense, this particular driving factor uh, or, uh, you know, using the driving factor in our gate designs, in our logical, uh, uh, you know, in a higher order digital uh, logic circuit designs is very, very useful. Right, just one more example. If let's say what happens if I have a size of eight, Right, for a 2 input NAND gate. Remember that the size of 4, the 2 is to 2. PMOS uh, transistor 2 and NMOS transistor of the size of 2 will give me the output current similar to that of the 2 is to 1 inverter. So my X factor or the X driving factor turns out to be 1 if I have a size gate size of 4. Here the gate size is 8. So that means I will have an input capacitance of 8C divided by the logical effort of 4 by 3 divided by 3. So I will get the driving factor as 2, which means that I will have the size of 8 here will give me the output current to be twice higher than that of the 2 is to 1 inverter. So it is having, it is actually driving a stronger current. And the reason is very simple. I will have, eventually I will have the size of 8 will give me 4 and 4 here on the PMOS side and on the NMOS side I will have 4 and 4. Right, so I will have a larger width here compared to my 2 is to 2, uh, uh, 2 input NAND gate. So that means that the width is higher. That means, uh, you know, the current is higher. So that's why I will have a driving factor of two. The parasitic capacitance here, just to validate it, it will be nothing but 3C multiplied by two multiplied by the normalized parasitic factor, which is nothing but two for a two input NAND gate will give me 12C. Input capacitance will be nothing but 3C into the driving factor of two multiplied by logical effort of four by three will give me 8C. And if I want to validate that uh, in my gate size of 8, um, this is what 4 plus 4 plus 4 will give me 12C as a parasitic capacitance, which is what is validated here. And the input capacitance of 8C is you now, if, if I can actually connect this to inputs, the gate size uh, will, give, will be nothing but 4 and 4, or rather the transistor size is 4 and 4, will give me an input capacitance, input gate capacitance, uh, overall input gate capacitance as 8C. 
so this is also validated <clears throat> so at this particular point of time what i had told earlier was i can actually redefine my overall capacitance right overall capacitance in terms of the driving factor and actually redefine uh, the capacitance in terms of the driving factor so 3c multiplied by the driving factor multiplied by the parasitics will give me the parasitic capacitance and the input capacitance will be uh, you know will can be uh, redefined as the driving factor multiplied by 3c multiplied by the logical efforts the energy at any point at any node in this particular uh, you know at any node in a circuit so for example if i have this particular circuit and if i choose to uh, consider this particular ith node because let's say that i have lot of nodes here and then let's say this is the this is the ith gate right so before that i will have i minus 1 gate and then so on and then subsequently it follows uh, the other set of gates and uh, let's say that this is getting branched right it is getting branched j number of times the ith node output and we need to find out what is the overall capacitance here so that because i should be able to evaluate the overall capacitance multiplied by uh, vdd square <coughs> excuse me so if i want to find out the overall the total capacitance here at the ith node right and if i have the driving factor uh, right because uh, of this particular ith gate which is a two input nand gate right i should be able to estimate what is the overall parasitic capacitance at this particular ith node and if i know what is the logical effort of this particular subsequent gates which are kind of branched right and it turns out to be it's nothing but a two input nor gate so i should be able to know what is the uh, the logical effort from the logical effort from the driving factor of this particular gates i should be able to estimate what is the overall capacitance is been loaded into this particular uh, ith node so my total capacitance at the ith node will be nothing but 3c multiplied by xi for the two input nand gate so at the ith node multiplied by the parasitics of the two input nand gate plus the summation for the j number of <coughs> the number of two input uh, nor gates right we will have xj and uh, j uh, gj which is nothing but the logical effort of the individual gates right so if i consider this will be one particular uh, logical effort this will be another logical effort this will be another logical effort and then so on till we hit the last uh, uh, gate so that's why this is a summation of uh, the overall capacitance so the input capacitance so there will be an input capacitance here there will be an input capacitance here there will be an input capacitance here and all this capacitance will get loaded into this particular ith node so i will have a parasitics node 3c into the driving factor into the parasitic of this particular uh, two input nand gate plus <coughs> 3c multiplied by uh, the summation of uh, the input capacitance so or rather you know the input capacitance of this gate this gate this gate so that's the summation so that's why i've taken the 3c outside and then summation of xj and gj remember that <coughs> this is the absolute energy for doing the transition of uh, 0 to 1 at this ith node right so if i really want to estimate what is the average energy that is being delivered by the vdd average energy delivered by the vdd at this particular ith node i should be able to estimate alpha i ct vdd square and that should be able to give me the uh, the energy that is being delivered by the vdd for one clock cycle 